Hi, folks. We'll get started in just a minute here. We want to uh, give a little bit of time for people to enter the room. All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Welcome to today's LF Networking webinar. Uh, the subject of our discussion today is Intelligent Networking and the Thoth Project. Where do we go from here? Uh, before I hand it over to Beth Cohen to do some introductions, just a couple of housekeeping updates. Um, all attendees will be muted during the webinar. Um, however, if you have a question, there is a little uh, Q&A box on the right corner of your screen. You can hit that at any time to type in your questions. Um, and a recording of the slides and a link to the, the webinar, or I'm sorry, recording of the webinar and a link to the slides will be sent to everyone who registered to attend uh, in the coming days. And we'll also be posting uh, access to this webinar on the LF networking uh, webpage. All right, without further ado, I'm gonna hand it over to Beth Cohen to kick off today's discussion. Well, thank you, Jill. Uh, so I want to just uh, set a little bit of what we're going to be talking about today. Um, I'm really excited about this, and we have a powerhouse panel of, of uh, people working in this area from around the globe, literally. Um, and uh, this is all based on uh, this white paper that we published uh, just a couple weeks ago um, on uh, specifically around intelligent networking and AI and machine learning and the telecom industry and where and what state it's in um, and uh, i encourage people to ask questions during uh, the presentation and then there'll be a panel following uh, that's going to be talking about some of the exciting new work that we're doing in this area and um, with that i am going to turn it over to uh, Tridar rao who's gonna be speaking about um, the new project that was just kicked off a couple months ago uh, by the LFM within the Anakin project, uh, Thoth. Hey, thanks, Beth. Yeah, hello everybody. Good morning, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, I, I'm Sridhar, I'm the project lead for Thoth. So it's an LFN project on uh, AI and ML for NFE use cases, and I represent Spire and Communication. Uh, so uh, Thoth, uh, it, it started uh, sometime in early June as, uh, uh, and we, we started discussion at the beginning of this year actually. And uh, when, once we found some good researchers uh, joining hands, so we, we proposed this project and started uh, as a uh, part of Anuket uh, project to do, to solve, to, it, it's a, the name is chosen based on the, to be in line with the Anuket name as an Egyptian God for learning and reckoning. And the, this, it, it's a numbers uh, six represents Thoth and the ibis is like a beak of the ibis, one of the symbols of Thoth. So uh, this logo, it's kind of captures both kind of. Is, uh, <clears throat> yeah, so I will start with a quick overview of what uh, this project is about. Uh, by the time we started this project, uh, MIT published uh, this article on decision driven data analytics thing. So, and, and uh, this, this decision driven data analytics really captured the thought process or discussion that we were having on that time. And, and it, it, it gave words to our thoughts uh, thing. So that's why we started to continue and using that as our philosophy uh, in working on this uh, project. Kind of thing. So it, it's mainly a software development project uh, where we focus on developing source codes. Uh, it could be either the models or the tools that I will uh, quickly come back and elaborate. And uh, considering this nature of the uh, domain, right? Uh, it's uh, AI and ML for NFE use cases. It, it requires a uh, lot of uh, research before we make any uh, decisions thing. So that's where we, we heavily invest on research studies. Uh, we publish few and we are working on something. And the, the, the most important for the success of this project is the collaboration, because without any collaboration with either the academic researchers or the open source communities, and of course the end user, the telcos, there's no way this project can be a successful one. So we, we heavily invest on uh, uh, collaborations thing. And lastly, uh, we, we are uh, working on to create something as a model as a service uh, thing. So where uh, the, the end users, typically the providers, can share their data set and the problem in hand. 
and our uh, researchers that we have in our team, uh, we will work on uh, uh, building the model, assessing it and delivering the machine learning model. Okay. So these, uh, uh, both these collaborate and uh, this two mostly the its idea around uh, solving that data set availability problem. <clears throat> Okay, so uh, these are quickly our nouns and verbs of our uh, project. We, uh, we mainly focus on uh, developing, uh, creating, working on the machine learning problems, build the models and supporting tools, and try to create uh, training and testing data sets. And with the, through uh, mainly around development and deployment activities and collaborations and research works. <clears throat> Yeah, uh, I would quickly want to run through the tentative roadmap that we have it as a, a, a project. We, as, as I mentioned, we started like uh, the beginning of this year and uh, uh, yeah, around June and uh, that formally we kick started in June and we initially we published few research studies. So we at the, I, I will share the GitHub URL or the, you can find it in the Anuket project list. Uh, you will find those interesting research uh, studies by our researchers. Uh, Girish and Rohit uh, from uh, from reputed uh, universities in India, and uh, we also published recently the failure prediction model for the virtual machine failure prediction model. And uh, currently, we are working on uh, log analysis and uh, data generation using GANs. Um, and uh, uh, in parallel, we have started an activity around uh, model as a service. What should be the ideal framework? So we are. We are actually elaborating multiple frameworks uh, that can be used to do for this purpose. And, and in 2022, we want to mainly focus around uh, a cloud native. So uh, cloud native is our uh, target considering the trend and uh, the direction that uh, telcos are also focusing on. So we want to solve some, some of the interesting machine learning problems in a cloud native domain. So if you see in, in a whole of this uh, 2022, we want to focus mainly on 20, uh, the cloud native thing. And, and uh, try to come up with the model as a service uh, by maybe by uh, mid mid uh, 2022 so that we can have along with the Moselle release uh, of Anuket. Uh, hopefully, hopefully we should be successful by during that time. Okay. Uh, yeah, so maybe by, uh, by end of this uh, year, we should have a stable uh, model. Next year, we should have a stable model as a service. Okay. Uh, so I'll just quickly walk through the research studies that we have published uh, thing. Uh, as, as I mentioned, this is very important for us. Uh, uh, thing. So we have published one is the, uh, what are the machine learning problems that is there in this uh, domain of NFE and the corresponding techniques that the researchers and uh, the academia and the industry have used to solve those problems. And second thing is the, the open source projects that are there uh, for AI uh, and ML for NFE use cases. So this, both these research activities are published uh, in a, both in an Excel and also uh, RST format uh, thing for quick quick review and read up. And currently we are working on, uh, the, as, as I mentioned, the cloud native NFE and AI. And ML. So uh, we are trying to come up with a, maybe a short uh, technical report on what are all the, the machine learning problems that we are trying to address in. Uh, that's It's more important in the cloud native uh, deployment of NFE. And, uh, uh, the, the another work that we are also working on is on the the, the data sources uh, thing, okay. Uh, so so there there are uh, this is this is one of the important works. So what are all the important uh, sources of the data, their formats and their meaning, and how it corresponds to the different uh, AI and ML problem. So this is another research activity that we are uh, pursuing uh, as of now, and we will plan to publish once we complete it uh, soon. <coughs> so. Uh, yeah. 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 So, and the next is on the models. Uh, so, so this is uh, where we. I uh, just want to quickly summarize what 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 do you mean by these models? As of today, uh, of course, uh, it's an open source. Uh, all the models will be open source. And as of today, the models are published as uh, part of the Jupyter notebooks, uh, or uh, the, of course in the, in the Python uh, separate Python files. And uh, we we initially started to use some Python frameworks. But uh, I mean, the machine learning frameworks like uh, Linux Foundation, Acumos and other things, but uh, it, it was kind of uh, dragging us uh, a bit. So we started to focus with Jupyter Notebooks and we do not want to have any constraints as of today on different uh, things. One of the things is of course the data access, it could be a file system or the databases or the repository or even a data pipeline if a framework has one of those data pipeline in place uh, thing. 
Similarly, they, we don't want to have any constraints as of now for the frameworks and the tools and the libraries. Though uh, we are heavily dependent on TensorFlow uh, in the initial models, but it's not a mandatory. So we are working on different uh, frameworks, as I mentioned, uh, where, and uh, I think uh, Kubeflow is looking very promising as of today. And also we do not want to have any constraints on, hey, uh, this should be the problem domain or that should be the technique that we should be using. And we, we, uh, we, we want to prioritize both the end user's preference and our researchers' uh, uh, interest also at the same time and see, how uh, we can do build these models, but the, the 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 main constraint is on focus is on novelty and the better performance. Thing. Of course, if if you don't uh, do better than the existing ones, it doesn't make really uh, any use for the end users. So our models are bucketized into these four things on the analysis, the detection, the prediction, and the generation. The, when it comes to analysis, mostly on the log analysis and the correlation detection, we are working on some anomaly detection uh, for the OpenStack log analysis. The prediction, as I mentioned, the failure prediction. And when it comes to the generation, we are working on the synthetic telemetry data generation using GANs. So, okay. And uh, yeah, yeah, so this is the published one. Uh, so we have published the VM failure prediction. Uh, and, and it's a very interesting uh, uh, thing, both, uh, uh, as I mentioned, Rohit uh, from BIT Mesra and Girish from VTU. So they are, uh, they are the researchers who have worked on this uh, uh, thing. So they are uh, both uh, computer science and mathematics uh, uh, domain they are pursuing the research and they are doing a very good activity and thanks to them we were able to publish uh, this work and currently we are working on uh, Google BERT uh, uh, technique for log analysis for OpenStack log analysis and uh, GANs for synthetic generation and uh, the, the resource as I mentioned they are mostly and yeah uh, sorry I missed this is Qflow framework uh, uh, for the we are evaluating the very, very strongly. I mean, every day we are working on this activity on evaluating the Qflow as a framework for, I think, and our contributors are academic researchers. So I will take this opportunity quickly I mean, to, uh, to request the audience who are interested, uh, please join hands. We have a lot of open problems that we can solve together. Yeah. Yeah, and, and we're looking particularly from uh, contributors from the telecom industry uh, who, who have the data sets. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Coming to the data set, <laughs> we all when we and it began. In fact, that was uh, in the beginning of this project. Elizabeth highlighted this issue. We will eventually have to. We will face it, and we'll have to solve it somehow. I think. So currently, we are taking a three prong approach to solve this data set problem. One is to request, of course, to collaborate with the different research labs uh, or other open source projects who have uh, test beds and who are running these test beds. Uh, uh, and most importantly, the, the telcos, we are trying to request EUAG. We, I attended the meeting and requesting them. And uh, uh, and the next is about creating these uh, test beds. For example, uh, thanks to Intel, uh, we have a few test beds with uh, OpenStack uh, and Kubernetes. And we are trying to build some tools to generate uh, uh, these kind of data. I will quickly come to that when I talk about tools. And uh, finally, the, of course, the emulation. This is our last option. Uh, currently, using GANs, we are trying to generate synthetic data, but the performance is not really up there. Uh, the, it's, it's really, uh, I would say, bad, but uh, we will eventually get there, trying to come closer and closer uh, to the real uh, data. Yeah. <clears throat> Finally, the tools that we are uh, uh, building as part of this uh, project. Uh, uh, thing. So uh, <clears throat> today we have, uh, uh, yeah. So, uh, so status today we have published a, a tool called model selector. So this is a Q and A based uh, CLI wizard. Uh, it, it will it will ask the user a bunch of questions uh, where, and uh, uh, based on the data that he has and the problem in hand and based on the answers that the users provide, it will uh, suggest among the three categories of supervised, unsupervised and reinforced which of the technique is, is, is the closest or the best approach to take uh, forward. So our, our model as a service, right? That's an enhancement of this idea of this model selector where uh, uh, instead of just answer doing the Q and A based thing, uh, I think uh, Steve Casey from uh, Verizon suggested uh, this option. Why don't we build a, a real tool itself like a framework which has all these kind of models or uh, reference implementations and actually run through the sample data set that the customer or the end user can provide and suggest them the better, better suggestion will be even better instead of just uh, Q and A based. 
And currently we are working on the two tools. One is the data structure and anonymizer. And uh, the next one is that uh, uh, time varying and a load varying workload generator. So this is for the, uh, the synthetic data generation on Kubernetes clusters uh, where we can, uh, uh, using open source tool, we want to, there are some two, two students have started this work and it's uh, going well. So they want to uh, complete it as soon as uh, possible. We should soon have this tool. Uh, I mean, so this is again, the, that is for the, this tool, the TVLV is for the data generation in the test beds in both OpenStack and Kubernetes environment. Whereas the other tools uh, are uh, targeting the end users. Okay. So for example, the data extractor and anonymizer is mainly uh, for the end users to share, if at all they want to share any uh, data, uh, maybe a sample data set for both the training and testing they can use this tool to extract and anonymize in, in for maybe uh, maybe remove certain columns uh, from from the most from some of the popular uh, data sources like uh, prometheus and elasticsearch these kind of tools okay. and of course this model selector is for the any any end users uh, either he is new to the domain or he has been working on this uh, thing uh, yeah, so so the data again coming back to I, I cannot stress enough uh, uh, thing. So it is very very important uh, uh, for us uh, in this case. Yeah. So this is a, a quick a quick overview of the Toth project. As uh, Beth mentioned, I request uh, on the, in the audience, especially from the, uh, the telco domain, uh, please join hands and uh, uh, similar to uh, the how how Orange and uh, others. Uh, have uh, helped us in this, uh, for example, our when we published a failure prediction, I think uh, we had to use a standardized data set that is being used by different academic researchers. So in that case, uh, whatever the data shared by Orange in the public really helped us uh, uh, think. So maybe we are looking forward to something similar from other telcos who can really help us. Uh, and so that we can contribute back in uh, trying to build some models for uh, the end users or for you uh, telcos. So I hope I haven't taken much. Of yeah. So thank you, <clears throat> thank you, Sridhar. That was a great introduction to Thoth, and I know um, I am participating as well as Steve Casey from from Verizon as well. So we, I think, we are hoping to uh, <clears throat> address the the data the the data gap, so to speak. Um, so with that, we're going to move into the second part of this uh, webinar which is we're going to have a panel of distinguished guests um, who are going to be talking about um, how, you know, how it's affecting telecoms, why it's important to the industry, um, and, and touch on, you know, some of the new things that, that we're all working on now uh, to realize, um, you know, the, how we can make our networks more intelligent. And, uh, and, and where we're focusing our research and where we're focusing our efforts today. So with that, I'm gonna uh, open it with a little brief introduction to everybody on the panel. Um, and uh, I'll start with myself. Um, so I'm a, a product uh, strategist for Verizon, um, have been involved in the open source community uh, for many, many years. I was uh, in uh, OpenStack, um, uh, for many years, and now I have been uh, instrumental in the Connecticut project, and uh, very excited to be working on AI uh, type activities now. Um, and we have a surprise guest, uh, Massimo from um, uh, from uh, uh, Telecom Italia. And so I'd like to open with you, uh, since you're not listed on the on the uh, panelists list because um you know we always okay. say <laughs> so, <you, Matthew. laughs> no. so please uh please uh, you know introduce yourself and tell us why you think uh intelligent network is important to the industry well uh, i am nice to meet you everyone here thank you for joining i am uh, massimo banzi working uh, for for many years in telecom italia in the standard department, I am working in innovation activities, uh, following several standard organization and among these also some uh, uh, open communities and uh, Linux Foundation is for sure the most important one I am following now. 
anyway, why, why this is so much important for us? Well, autonomous uh, network, uh, the, the possibility of uh, uh, understanding the need and the desires of our customer before they even understand what, what they need. And all this uh, is uh, enabled by the use of new artificial intelligence techniques, uh, machine learning, et cetera, et cetera. And this is the reason why it's uh, six months now or something more that we have a, a specific department in Telecom Italia, we call it data office, that uh, is uh, focused on collecting all uh, the data lakes uh, from uh, all the sources in Telecom Italia, reporting directly to our CEO. Uh, the, but this department is focused exactly on this, uh, on uh, collecting data and uh, identifying a new methodology for analyzing and for uh, for casting what uh, our customer will need and the possibility for is the, the possibility of uh, improving uh, the assurance of the network and of our services. And this is the reason why I am uh, joining these activities and I am here now. Thank you. Thank you. So Li Hong um, from uh, China Mobile, um, could you introduce yourself briefly? Yes, of course. Thank you, Beth. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Lei Huan from China Mobile. Um, I'm a researcher in China Mobile Research Institute, and I'm now mainly focused on intelligent networking industry ecology, um, intelligent network um, platform development, and other relevant work. Um, for the question why I think that uh, intelligent network is important to the industry. Um, I think that um, because as, as we all know that intelligent networking is a network empowered by AI technology and systematic integration of AI and communication network on hardware, software systems and process. Uh, the realization of network intelligence depends on the equipment and data of operators and vendors. So therefore, um, only with through the industry ecology cooperation can we try to promote the further development of network intelligence technology. Thank, Thank you. you, everyone. Thank you. So Sridhar, I know... Um... We didn't really introduce you at the beginning, so. <laughs> yeah, hi. Yeah, so hi. So I am uh, I work as architect at uh, Spirant Communications. Uh, I'm I'm a PTL of uh, test and validation projects in Anuket, and this is a, a, a new project for me uh, to leading this because it's it's uh, equally work uh, important for uh, our organization. So I think you might be aware. Uh, traditionally, we have uh, been adding this intelligence in the legacy networks. For example, the customer churning and these kind of problems we were solving. And this, uh, when, uh, when the transition to the cloud happened, we also had to adapt our tools and products and uh, make it uh, bring these kind of uh, AI uh, solutions in our products and solutions too. So that's why this project and uh, we are full, uh, have full support from our organization to lead this project and it will become a very important project for us. And uh, that's where I want to, uh, I'm spending a lot of my time and interest uh, as of now. And hopefully uh, we can make this uh, third project successful going ahead. And then thanks for the opportunity for being part of this panel and share my thoughts. Thank you. Yu Hong, finally. Hi, hello everyone. I'm Yu Hong from Channel Bell. And uh, I'm now working on the uh, AI and Intelligent Operation R&D Center. And uh, I think uh, the intelligent network is the uh, uh, deep integration of automation and the intelligence technology with uh, communication network, hardware, uh, software system, process, and et cetera, uh, which promotes quality and efficiency improvements leads uh, network technology reforms and in enables agile business innovation, uh, rapid expansion of business, and uh, technical evolution for network and optimization for operation management. Thank you. So I would like to open the uh, the panel with a question directed uh, directed to Sridhar. Um, uh, 
you know, based on your work with Thoth and based on the survey results, um, do you think that the open um, the open source community is the right place to address these gaps that we've identified? Yeah, very much actually. So I think uh, I'm. I'm uh... I think most of the audience here may have gone through the white paper. If not, please uh, go through it. Uh, in, in this, uh, in this uh, excellent study, you will find that uh, there is a need for a shared understanding of the intelligent network, right? Uh, and also uh, reliable data access, uh, solving this uh, problems of this reliable data access. For these two uh, points, uh, I want to highlight that uh, uh, community is the right place for us to address these two points specifically from this white paper, because uh, uh, for the for the legacy network, for example, when I gave the example of customer churning, the problem is uh, very well understood throughout the uh, uh, community and all the stakeholders uh, uh, thing. But when it comes to, uh, for example, if, even if I say a failure prediction in my case in the first model that we published, right, there is there isn't a proper shared understanding of. Uh, uh, both the problem as such and the data set uh, that is used and within the data set, what each and every columns and uh, mean and uh, different uh, tools that are the place as uh, uh, Leon was mentioning about the uh, different types of uh, hardware and the tools that are present. So we need to have a proper uh, shared understanding of what really intelligent network mean and what are the problems we want to address and uh, definitely community is the a right place where we, we can have such kind of discussions and have a, uh, initially build these kind of solutions that can be uh, tried and uh, worked on hands on. And uh, second thing, of course, is the reliable data access. And I gave the example of uh, uh, the, the problem. If you today, if you look in academia, the whatever the research that get published, the first question that a researcher has to answer, how reliable your data set is, or why should I believe your model uh, and what kind of uh, the data set that you have used in your training, right? Uh, so that that uh, every researcher, whether he's, uh, whether he's pursuing his academic PhD or anything, he has to answer that uh, question. So, so in this case, uh, if we want to justify uh, our model, uh, uh, credibility of our model, we have to address the, what is the data uh, set that you have used for building the training and testing this model. And for that, we need a reliable data set for a particular problem. And believe me, uh, it, it uh, helps uh, everybody in the, all the all the stakeholders. And uh, just example I gave regarding the orange uh, data set that was shared, we could circle back our findings, uh, whatever the model, the new model that we built for uh, uh, open, uh, OpenStack VM failure prediction uh, model, right? We could circle back with the orange team researchers and share our uh, uh, output with them. And, and we got a very constructive feedback on the uh, in that sense. So um, both yeah. uh, both the uh, help it helps all of us, both the researchers in building the models. And these two, I would want to highlight these two points from the white paper where uh, the community can really really play a big role. Yeah, and I'd like to I'd like to add. I know from my perspective, um, I'm finding that the data sets even with within are the telecom, you know, within Verizon, we have different understandings of the data. So, you know, I can only imagine that problem is magnified across the industry. So it seems to me that it's very, very important to, uh, to address it and, and the open source community is the place to do that. Um, so uh, uh, any other thoughts from the other people? Um, and I, kn I know I did see a, a question come in, an excellent question related to real-time data uh, that we will, uh, I think we'll address a little later in the panel. Um, so uh, any other thoughts before we move to the next question? No. Um, so the next question is uh, directed at Li Hong, and that is, um, uh, where specifically do you think that the community should be putting its efforts um, in, into contributing to intelligent networking? As, as we found from the, uh, from the survey results, there's a number of areas that you can put um, uh, your efforts in. One is, is algorithms. Another one is, is scrubbing the data. You can also put it into the operational side of the house. Uh, you know, 
or you can put it into you know the ma maintenance and management or you can put it into the network performance um, so like your thoughts about you know where you think um, is the best place uh, to put our efforts at this point in the in the technology adoption curve well thank you Beth uh, for this this question um... From my perspective, I think that um, everyone knows that uh, main challenge of AI and intelligent networking currently include um, data tools, platforms, etc. Um, as the open source community is um, um, open place for operators and vendors, it can help promote the development of intelligent networking technology. So where the community should be putting its effort to contribute to intelligent networking. Um, first of all, um, I think that um, it is a good place to build a common understanding of AI platform. We can jointly build a general network intelligence platform through the open source community. And secondly, uh, promote industry collaboration and open source project. In the process of deploying intelligent networks, the operations and maintenance activity will gradually shift from people to autonomous network systems. The basis for system decision-making will extend from expandable experience to complex AI algorithms as models. That is not just a simple techno technical issue, but requires industry cooperation to establish fair and objective evaluation standards, um, open and reusable test environments, and well-organized certification service. So promote data and model sharing. Um, vendors and operators need to um, develop common AI models for data um, through a mechanism for model and data sharing. Um, an AI and ML and model sharing project would be a good way to promote industry collaboration, to promote and share of data and models through the joint construction of intelligent networking scenarios. And another one is to um, establish a unified testing and certification program. Um, from the feedback of the LFN Intelligent Networking Survey, the highest priority to work home testing and certification service for intelligent networking is effectiveness evaluation and testing system for intelligent application, um, such as test cases, uh, data collection, and um, quantitative metrics, etc. So therefore, uh, we should invest in building a testing and certification program that could evaluate various intelligent application with um, objective performance metrics and evaluation approaches by scenarios, um, categories, and levels. To build this kind of program, um, Industry collaboration is critical. So um, above our, uh, my opinion, you can also search for recommendations from our white paper. Um, in this white paper, we will analyze in detail the te technical next of current network intelligence and how to better solve these pain points through the industry. Yeah, thank you. Um, so um, other comments about, uh, about this? Uh, from the panel. Um, so uh, <clears throat> let's say, um, so following on that, um, you, um, you Han, um, like your, like your thoughts on um, how the open source community can really create that um, common data set. It seems like it's a very hard problem. And um, and, and, you know, I think we're all in agreement that the problem is important for the open source community to address as, as Lee just spoke about and, and Sridhar as well. Um, but I think, um, you know, how can we get there is, um, 
is the uh, is the next step that we need to do. And you, Hung, would like your your thoughts about that? Thank you, Beth. And uh, I think um, based on our uh, AI and ML white paper and the uh, survey results, we find that uh, data standardization and uh, shared data sets and models have been a uh, long term challenges for the adoption of. Uh, intelligent networking and the uh, uh, basic AI algorithm framework is the most needed capabilities provided by uh, unified intelligent network platforms. Uh, a shared understanding of the data models themselves is the uh, basic requirement. Uh, for example, how data is defined can vary well across operators or even within a single operator. Even something as simple as basic AI algorithm framework is a much needed capability to advance the industry. And uh, uh, I think vendors and the operators need to develop common AI models for data through a mechanism for a model and data sharing. If the open source community could establish an AI and ML, AI and ML and the model sharing project would be a good way to promote industry collaboration, promote the sharing of data and the models through the joint construction of intelligent networking scenarios. To this end, uh, UAG has established the AI and ML and the model sharing project, which is committed to promoting the sharing of data and the models uh through the joint construction of intelligent network application scenarios uh such as uh, congestion prediction and uh, mitigation and uh, super uh, cell detection traffic steering and uh, soft soft photo de uh, detection and uh, resolution etc uh, so Thank you. Uh, any other thoughts before uh, we, we have some live questions? Uh, one of them is addressed to Sridhar, and I think this is a, a follows up uh, quite nicely with um, some of the uh, thoughts that uh, Yuhan just, ha uh, just spoke about related to real-time data um, and how do we integrate real-time data? Because, of course, that's the... That's the um, the ultimate goal is to act, you know, act, have our networks be intelligent in real time. Uh, it doesn't do a whole lot of good to be intelligent sort of after the fact. We want the, the networks to respond to the changes in workloads in real time so that they, you know, to optimize the performance of applications. Uh, so Sridhar, um, if you could talk a little bit more about that. Um, and yes. uh, the question is also how users integrate the models in their networks and how to align the expectations and test KPIs. Exactly. So uh, it's a very good question. So actually, when we started this uh, project, right, uh, we wanted to start with the framework that can help us to do this uh, thing. So when I use the word framework, right, uh, I mean, uh, it, it, it has uh, a data pipeline support, uh, which will help us to achieve this kind of integrations uh, to any kind of data sources, uh, or maybe at least the storages thing, right? For example, the the at the end sources typically in most of these uh, deployments there will be uh, some kind of observability solution or a monitoring solution where all the data is gathered and put into uh, databases like uh, Prometheus or Elasticsearch and these kind of uh, solutions, and and uh, from there typically this data pipeline starts and consume these kind of live data. Uh, it could be either live or maybe. Uh, short period of time and this data to consume and the model to consume this kind of data and uh, work on that uh, data. So for that, uh, if I'm referring that as a framework, we initially wanted to start with Acumos Linux Foundations itself, Linux Foundation itself as a good project for Acumos. So we wanted to start with that uh, uh, thing. And so as of today, uh, we haven't finalized on the project because uh, over the last three months we have seen uh, going container, I mean, cloud native, even for this thing would uh, help us. So we are uh, looking strongly at the Qflow as the uh, one of the framework and uh, where they, they also have the data pipeline uh, integration uh, options that are there. So we are we are really looking at these kind of frameworks and maybe 
uh, when I showed in my in my timeline, tentative timeline, uh, maybe in next uh, few months we should have a framework that will help us uh, to integrate these models, and we will of course migrate our existing models to these frameworks so that can integrate with this live uh, data and work on those uh, live data. Uh, thank you, thank you. Um, any other thoughts from the panel uh, before we? Uh, I know we have another question that's come in. Um, so I think uh, the million dollar question here um, is what is your strategy to persuade the providers to share their useful and actual internal data, um, even the sensitive data, to have a meaningful data set model results? Um, and I, I would like to talk about that because um, obviously I'm representing one of the providers that has that data. Um, and uh, I have two comments about it. One, it's we do need to persuade the providers to share it. I know that Orange has shared one set of data. Um, and we also need to reconcile the data internally. Um, so that's one thing that that I know we found out just on our internal projects is that the data is not, is not uniform within our own company. So that means that, that there has to be a framework to A, make, you know, map the data so that it is, there's a common understanding. Um, but I think it's also important to, um, have a way of anonymizing the data. Um, and I'll use an example of the data that is uh, used uh, for in medical research. Um, so uh, in medical research, you, you know, you have patient data, which is obviously uh, sensitive data, um, and it needs to be anonymized appropriately. Um, and it's actually a fairly difficult problem because it turns out that particularly if you're researching something like, um, you know, a rare disease, um, it's actually fairly easy for the researchers to figure out who the person is who actually had that rare disease. Um, so we need to, again, come up with meaningful ways to anonymize the data so that it's not, not only anonymize it, but also make it useful at the same time so that we don't get um, biased uh, results. Uh, I know we've had a number of conversations around um, bias within the data that that renders the algorithms um, useless. Uh, so it's, do I have an answer? Um, the answer is not yet, um, but we are working on it. And one of the things that the EUAG, as the a, a group of people representing the telecoms specifically, uh, we have to take it on ourselves to persuade our own companies to share this data. Any other thoughts from the panelists on that? On that? Uh, on yeah. that question? <laughs> I, I would like to share, share my opinion on. That. So uh, there are two things that uh, uh, we are uh, trying to uh, think. So one is in the model as a service, right? So one is to uh, entice or maybe uh, cajole uh, telcos, hey, uh, there is something in return you can get out of it. Uh, so if, if you share us a data set uh, with us, a sample data set, even as uh, the, the question was asked, even if it's insensitive, it's okay. Uh, uh, so if you share us the data set and the problem, we will give you the models uh, uh, to you, we will build, we will assess, we will develop, and we will even maintain it and uh, improvise it for you. Uh, so this is one way of uh, uh, what what uh, to answer what I can get out of it uh, in, in return if I share the data. So we we are we promise to build and give the models uh, to the end user. So this I'm I'm hoping this could be uh, one of the point that can. Uh, uh, maybe they help uh, the telcos to consider sharing the data. And in fact, uh, with one of the end users, I even mentioned the share those problems in the data set that if you don't want to invest your human resources on that, because most of these telcos, they have their research labs who are working on already these kind of problems. So if you don't want to invest your resources on these kind of problems, some of these problems, please share us with this community. So we would be, we would be happy, to, our researchers would be happy to work on those problems and build models for you. And I'm sincerely hoping uh, this offering uh, from the project can uh, help in uh, uh, convincing the telcos to 
uh, and I fully respect their decisions to when to share, what to share, and how to share. But uh, hoping that this would help them to do it. And and the second uh, point is on the tools that we are trying to build. As uh, Beth mentioned, we are still discussing with, uh, and she's uh, thanks to her, she has been joining every week the meeting and sharing her thoughts and inputs on this thing. We are still working on what really anonymizing means uh, for different kinds of sources of data and how do we really achieve that. So our anonymizer tool that we are uh, in progress, we want to address that problem and, uh, and so that that can uh, give some confidence in uh, sharing the data. Yeah. So would, th uh, thank you, Sridhar, yeah. for those thoughts. Um, so just to sum up, um, you know, we've come to the end of the uh, program. I'm going to be turning it over to Jill to, to finalize it and wrap it up. Um, as you can see, this is a really hard problem, and we're just starting down the road. Um, but it's also a really exciting time to be participating in the intelligent networking conversation. And I encourage um, all the listeners to this webinar to reach out um, to, to us um, and, mm. and share your thoughts um, so, and uh, hopefully participate. <laughs> Yeah. So, so there are some uh, two quick questions. Uh, maybe we can answer that uh, from Rob uh, and Vishnu. So yeah. yeah. So for uh, if I take can I take a minute and answer that is okay. Yes. That's... And then we'll then we'll turn it over to Jill to finish up. Sure. Sure. So uh, yeah, uh, the orange orange data set is public. We have a, a, a link in our tool project for all the publicly available data sets that one can view. Maybe uh, you can visit our uh, uh, Toth project web page. Or maybe this Friday we have a meeting. You can join the meeting. We will uh, share all the URLs uh, with you. And on the question, the portability of a model, it's actually a very interesting uh, point that you have mentioned, uh, Rob, here. Uh, so we, uh, as, as you mentioned, we work, uh, we train, and we build these models for a particular set of data. Now, whether we can port it into a your network where it will consume the live data and it will uh, do it, it depends on uh, how, it, how it was trained, as, as I think... Uh, uh, from researchers from China Mobile mentioned, uh, there are different interpretation of different fields of the data. Now, if yeah. there is a one-on-one -on -one mapping of these two fields, how it was trained and where it is be running, if there is a same thing without any translation or normalization required, then it will definitely uh, be work. Uh, will work fine. Or else we may have to do these kind of uh, uh, pre-processing uh, that can suit the models as such thing. Well, I'd also like to add, um, and I know we didn't really spend a whole lot of time with it, and I know we're running out of time, but um, you know, there are two streams of uh, intelligent networking. There's the operational side, and there's the network performance side, and they're really quite different data sets, and they, um, and they sure. need different algorithms, and they need to be handled differently. So um, that's, again, something that as we get more into the research, it, it becomes more obvious that that's that some of the some of them interact with each other, but some of them are actually independent. So I know we've been doing a whole lot of work around natural language processing of uh, queries and tickets, uh, which, you know, obviously improve our operations, but they don't necessarily directly impact the network itself. So with that, I would like to thank everybody for all the great questions and thank the entire panel um, and, and especially Sridhar for his wonderful presentation on Thoth. And I'm going to turn it over to Jill uh, to wrap it up. Great. Thank you, Beth. I uh, just want to say thank you again to all of today's panelists and to everyone who joined us. Um, also want to mention, if you'd like to learn more about what was discussed today, visit anikit.io. A-N-U-K-E-T dot I-O or lfnetworking.org. And, and as we mentioned at the beginning, uh, slides and a recording will be available um, in the coming days. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Have a great day.